If you are interested in a more in-depth look on this specific build or any of my other builds, there are longer episodes on each build on my channel, so feel free to check that out. I will leave links in the description down below for all of the products that I used in this video, so if you're interested in those, also feel free to check out the description below and see what's up for you. After unboxing the kit, I moved on to cutting out all the parts for the body and all the parts that need to be painted body colors out of the sprue. So those were cut out, cleaned up a little bit along all of the edges and some of the sink marks and mold lines were also removed. I firstly just marked all of them off with a permanent marker to show me a sort of guide coat for during the sanding process. Once the marker is removed, so should the mold line be as well. Most of the panel lines on the model itself were pretty much fine already. Some just needed a bit more depth, so I just went over them with a panel line scriber just to make them a little bit deeper and not disappear after a couple coats of paint. Before I can start painting, of course, the body needs to be sanded as well to remove a couple imperfections and also give the paint a bit of bite onto the plastic. As you can see, it is really glossy, really shiny. That means it is too smooth for the paint to grab onto it. So a light sanding with 600 grit will remove all of that glossy finish and give it a bite for the paint to grab onto. I decided to go with a gray surface primer from Tamiya as I really like how this covers and works really well with these brighter colored bodies, fully covering it in pretty much one or two coats. A couple coats of primer later and it was time to apply the color. I decided to go with a Ferrari color for this one, Grigio Alloy. It's a silver color with a blue tone to it, maybe better described as an ice silver. A couple coats of color later and it was nicely covered so I could move on to applying a glossy clear coat. I'm using some Street Blisters 2K Clear to give it that super smooth finish I'm after. With all of the body parts now painted and clear coated, I set those aside for a couple of days to cure and move on to the interior in the meantime. All of the parts were primed first and then I applied various different colors to all of the components, firstly starting off with some black and then moving on to some blue for the other interior parts. So even though I took a close look at the decal sheet while unboxing the kit, I kind of completely forgot that there was a decal for this center section and that I didn't really need to paint it silver. But anyways, I forgot, so I masked it off, painted it silver, and then later on applied a silver decal on top of it with some of the gauges. So for the interior, the main color would be blue. All of the parts were painted blue, including the floor pan, and I'm gonna be adding some blue carpet to it to continue that look and feel. Okay. 
With all the paint on the main dashboard and all the other interior parts now cured, I could move on to applying a couple of decals. So with this being one of the iconic British classic cars, it also has a super neat wooden steering wheel. The centerpiece is a metal part and the outer hoop is wood. So I wanted to try and replicate that by painting it on. So I first just painted that silver, then added the base brown tone to the, uh, the hoop itself and started dry brushing on various other tones of wood colors just to make it pop and give it a bit of a grainy look as actual wood has too. I also added in a couple darker tones just to highlight it even more. To help the paint flow out even more, I decided to add a bit of thinners, in this case airbrush cleaner, which does pretty much the same thing, and then decide to go on and move on with more dry brushing. So up to this point, it doesn't really look all that great. So let's fix that and add some orange clear to make all the wood grain really, really pop. With the wood now finished, I moved on to finishing off the steering wheel itself with the main center decal and also adding a bit of panel line accent color to some of those lower lying areas. To make the gauges stand out nicely too, I decided to add some epoxy on top of it to give it that glass look. Pretty much all of the detailing has been completed at this point for the interior so I could move on to the assembly.
Now that the interior is finished, I could move on to the chassis itself. So the main chassis piece is already painted and underneath the interior. I just need to add more components to it and detail those in order to finish it off, of course. Some of them could be glued together as they were consistent of multiple parts and that they need to be the same color, so just glue them together prior to painting, then move on into the spray booth, add some primer, and spray the various colors. With the main colors being applied by the airbrush, I did need to add a couple more details here and there with a small brush and some paints too. To add a bit more life to the chassis and engine components, I decided to weather them. Some of them just a little bit to give them a different tone of silver or material, and some of them just a bit more just to make them look slightly used. The engine straight out of the box is already beautifully detailed by Ravel, but I just couldn't leave it there. I needed to add some distributor wire too. So I drilled the small holes first, then painted that center section in the gold titanium finish and then started adding the wires. Most of the engine has been assembled, some decals are applied and set to cure, so in the meantime I moved on to the chassis itself again by assembling the rear section. The rear part of the chassis is now mostly finished so I could move on to the front by putting in the engine and starting on the other pieces.
with most of the engine parts and engine bay parts in, I could add a couple of decals just to give it even more life. With the engine mostly assembled, I could move on to the next stage of the build, and that is to focus on the exterior. One of the pieces from the kit that I didn't really like were the wheels, as they weren't really as detailed as I wanted them to be. But luckily, a fellow modeler who is quite handy in 3D modeling on the computer decided to design some wheels for this kit, which really upped the game of the final look for this kit. So I decided to 3D print them. After printing, they needed to be cleaned up, and you can see all of the nice detail for all the spokes. Of course, after cleaning, they needed to be cured and then could be moved into the spray booth to be chromed. In the chroming process, I first added some primer to them, then painted them in a flat black and added the Molotow chrome on top to give it that nice glossy mirror finish that chrome has. I gave the chrome a couple days to cure before handling it, then put on the tires and could assemble them on the chassis itself. The interior and chassis are now completed and the body has had enough time to cure so I could move on to finishing all of the details on here too. First starting with some chrome bits around the doors and all the other panels, masking it up nicely to create a panel line, adding the bare metal foil, shaping it, cutting it and then finishing that. Now before I could of course glue that chassis and interior into the body, I needed to finish the inside of the body off too. And just to give it a clean look, I decided to go with a black headliner. I could have also gone with a light gray or even a white headliner, but I simply just prefer the black look. The paint has cured, some decals were applied and the rear view mirror was put in place too. Then I could start the task of folding over the body uh, with the chassis, just finagling it on, bending and grabbing it here and there until it snaps nicely in place. Most of the gaps already shut really nicely together, but some didn't really want to align the way I wanted it to, so I added a bit of glue and just pushed them together. The glass fits pretty well straight out of the box, but it could use a little bit of adjustment, so I sanded all the edges, removing some of the mold lines, and then painted that with a black permanent marker for a rubber look to seal it all round before placing the chrome bits in and gluing the parts on too.
With most of the chrome now fixed to the exterior, it was time to move on to the main skeleton for the inside of the hood. A couple pieces for the headlights needed to be glued in there, and the main frame needed to be assembled too before putting that under the hood. With the lower half of the hood now on too, I could just carefully start pressing it on the hinge itself. Some more chrome and a couple clear parts and we're nearly there. The final Jaguar emblem on the front was put on and this build is finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this series and I will see you next time.